Well, welcome everybody to the Yo Disabled and Proud Paid Internships Game On webinar that we're having. Um, Tom Foley is the Deputy Director of the World Institute on Disability, and my name is Terry Hartman Squire, and CEO of Ainsoft Communications, which is a woman-owned small business specializing in disability, inclusive diversity, and public policy. Tom, can you explain a little bit about WID? and our partners in the Add Us In consortium? Absolutely. Go into the, the next slide, Anne-Marie. Um, so again, every, thanks everybody for joining us. So this uh, project is a result of a grant that we received from the Department of Labor, which we are very grateful for. And we have a consortium, the California Add Us In consortium, is made up of uh, the World Institute on Disability. And hopefully most of you guys know about WID, but we're a public policy center organized by and for folks with disabilities. We came out of the independent living movement uh, years ago, and we do a lot of work uh, doing research and public policy issues. And we're really fortunate to be partnered up with uh, the California Foundation for Independent Living, Yo Disabled and Proud represent. Um, who have really been helping us out on this grant um, to be able to participate in events like this and really reach out to the community to tell you guys about some of these great opportunities. Uh, we're also working with California Department of Rehabilitation, the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, who are the organizing group of which the employers are all members. Um, and they've really done a big piece of this project, making sure that their member organizations um, uh, are really interested in hiring uh, students and alum with disabilities. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. And then, of course, Einsoft Communications with Terry Hartman Squire, our favorite uh, public um, uh, marketing uh, uh, partner on this grant. Um, and those organizations all make up the California Addison Initiative. Thanks, Tom. Now, I'm going to dance to the next slide. A um, little bit about the Addison Consortium. There are eight similar consortiums that the Department of Labor is funding all across the country. Uh, there's one in Los Angeles, and one in Chicago, and New York, and Kansas City, and other places. Um, ours is covering the whole state of California, and so we're very excited about that. And we're in the third year of our grant. The second year in which we're offering internships that are paid uh, to students um, with disabilities. So on this slide, we tried to be clever. I tried to be clever uh, and come up with one of the great features of the Add Us In opportunity. So A is an awesome experience. Um, we have some feedback. We're in our second year. We have ten very successful paid internships last year, and one of them was even converted to a part-time position, which is very cool. And those internships are in Northern California. Currently, we have some great openings in Sacramento, and we will be having some in the Bay Area later on uh, in the year. And we have some opportunities available in San Diego right now. And Later in the year, we'll be having opportunities in Los Angeles. And the really cool part about it is there are also virtual opportunities. So some of those are no matter where you are in the state, you would be able to um, participate in this program. So that's the first A. The D in ad is we have isolated uh, and really sought out disability savvy employers. And the core goal of this is that we want you to be able to bring your whole self to work. Whether you have an apparent disability or a non-apparent disability, it doesn't matter to us and it doesn't matter to the employers. So this will be a really great opportunity to launch your career because the employers want to make whatever accommodations they can and they're really interested. And all of them are volunteering to help us with this pilot project, this grant from the Department of Labor called Add It In. So it's a really safe, very cool, hip um, group of employers that are really eager to work with us, which is wonderful. The second D in Add It In is that we hope you don't sit on the hot sidelines. And we hope you'll see this at the end of this webinar 
And for those people who are watching or witnessing this once it's archived mm -hmm. on the Yale website, that you'll get in the game. That this is really a very unique opportunity and an opportunity to launch your career. And the internships, when we get a little deeper into the presentation, may or may not be something that you think you're looking for. But as you're starting your career search, it's also important to think about what you want to do and test the waters and see if an internship in what you think you want to do is really what you want to do. And if at the end of eight weeks and getting paid for it, you realize mm, that might not be what I want to do, that's really useful too in developing and launching your career. So for the U and the S and at us in, we feel very strongly that this experience will up your competitive edge. And you'll be exposed to an employer network, which is always really important because it's not only potential employers, but it's potential mentors as well. And as you're thinking about launching your careers, it's really important to build a whole community and network, not only of peers, but of mentors and people that you can learn from. So the S in Addison is for the student earned income exclusion, which means that you can earn real dollars. So I'm going to ask Tom to explain that in a little more detail. Absolutely. Thanks, Terry. So you know, one of the things that people often, uh, the first question people always ask about internships is, is it paid? And the answer to that is yes. Um, and the second question folks always want to know about is like, well, what, what will that do you know, if I'm on benefits, if I get SSI or Medicaid? And so the student earned income exclusion is this really cool thing that the Fed's put in, uh, into the law to allow people to take internship opportunities. So this is basically how it works. If you're under 22 years old, and you're a student, and you get a summer internship, you can earn up to $1,700 a month and not have it affect your SSI at all. Um, and that's for one month. The, you can earn up to about $6,600 for the year. And this is really designed specifically for students with disabilities to make sure that they can get that summer work experience or spring work experience really up that competitive advantage that Terry was talking about and really get off the sidelines and get some work experience because we know the more work experience people have when they're in school or right after school, the more likely they are to be able to find a full-time job. So again, if you're under 22, if you're in school and you're looking for an internship, um, you know, this is an excellent opportunity uh, to get a paid internship um, and not have that income affect your benefits at all. Back to you, Terry. Thank you. Um, well, that's the add us. In is the internship, as we mentioned, they're paid. Um, and now we last year we started this with summer internships, and it was so successful for both the interns and the employers, some of which are, are signing up for the third year as well, that we decided to expand it to spring internships and fall internships. So we really wanted to maximize the opportunities for you, you know so that you could figure out what would be the best timing for an eight-week chunk of time, whether you're in school or whether you have other commitments, family, or whatever. We wanted to give you the maximum opportunities. And they're all paid. So the spring ones are generally from February or March through May or June. And some, you know, some schools are on quarter systems and some on semester systems. So there will be a little overlap. The summer ones are usually June through August, and then fall would be September, October through um, November. So we have all of those opportunities for you to think about. And the end in Add Us In is that the very cool part about this is that it doesn't matter what your college level is or where you're at, this kind of experience can augment whatever academic rating you have. So it's really been customized and well thought out to really make it an excellent experience for you in a safe environment because all these employers really want to hire interns with disabilities. So we're going to dance the next slide. And Tom's going to talk about some of the variety of the very cool, well, we say we think they're cool. Uh, you be the judge of that. Eight-week paid internships that we have. 
Thanks, Terry. You know, th they really are cool internships. Well, I was when we were putting this presentation together, I was thinking about my first internship when I was in high school, and it was as a file clerk. And I, I basically filed stuff from A to Z every day. And I got to say, that was great work experience. I got paid to do it. But we've got some crazy cool internship opportunities. Okay, so check this out. We've got a charter yacht company out of San Diego who are looking for interns. It's this like hundred-year-old sailboat that uh, sails around uh, the bay and does everything from uh, sightseeing to whale watching. Um, to just you know, sort of pleasure cruises. Uh, they even do sort of burials at sea. So if you know you ever, that's sort of like the ultimate summer job. You know, working uh, with a, a sailboat company uh, in San Diego. Um, we have this other internship, and you know, when we we first started talking with the employer, they said that they did uh, they did predator enhancement, and I said. And I don't even know what predator enhancement is. That sounds dangerous. And what it is is they work with zoos um, and they work with kennel clubs and stuff like that. And they build equipment for things like you know cheetahs to exercise on um, in a zoo environment. So it could be a climbing structure. It could be sort of like a treadmill for cheetahs. They're looking for help both from the mechanical side of the house to the marketing side of the house to the administrative side of the house. Um, and you know how many people get to say that they had an internship that helped you know cheetahs get exercise? Pretty cool stuff. There's a tap dance studio that's looking um, for folks to help out on the administrative and marketing side of stuff. By the way, if you guys are good with social media, there are jobs out there for you. You know, part of why these jobs are so interesting and so cool is all the participating members of uh, in in this group are with. Uh, again, the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, and these are small organizations for the most part. You know, they're really entrepreneurial, so it's not like you'll just be doing one or two things. You'll probably get a really good taste of what it's like to do lots of different things um, from a small business perspective. Um, we also have some great opportunities in the Sacramento, Sacramento area, in the journalism area. If you like to write, if you're pretty good at writing um, or editing, that sort of thing, we've got some great opportunities. Again, as Terry mentioned earlier, with companies that are really interested in hiring uh, students with disabilities. Um, Thanks, Terry. Back to you. Okay. So. What is it? You want to really think of this as an opportunity, whether it's good for you today or it might be good for you in six months. We thought we would do an overview because whenever you're ready for it, we're ready for you. So you can score some career building points. So using that little click button that um, Rosemary told us, those of you that are in the chat room, um, do you have plenty of time to find? A quality paid internship. Anybody want to click yes or no? Yes. Okay. All right. So we know that time is is really important, and so what we wanted to do is we wanted to do the heavy lifting and make sure that we only present quality opportunities for you, and we vet these employers. And not everybody, even though they want to be. An employer with this internship opportunity really has the right stuff that we feel would be a good fit with youth with disabilities. So when you're looking for an employer or an internship, you know it might be hard to find the right fit. You know you think you know what you want to do if you're majoring in something or you, you want to check something out, but there's a lot of unknown variables. So what we've done is we wanted to make sure that these are the right fit for you. So when the employers present the opportunities, Tom and his associate Kat over at WID, they go through all the stuff and Tom and I spend time with the employers on the phone to really understand what they need and to get them thinking on how this would be a good opportunity for you. Also, if you have an exceptional internship, you might want to consider it as a full time or part time job in the future. I mean that's the perfect opportunity because it's kind of like dating or kind of like building any kind of relationship. If you want to get some experiences um, in that situation before you make a commitment, and we figure that this is a great opportunity, and 
since one of the 10 internships the very first time we did this last summer worked out that the employer was so happy that they offered the person a part-time job. We think that's really cool. And that's one measurement of success. The other measurement of success is that the employers that hired interns last year, they're back. And they want more interns. So this is really an exciting opportunity because we all know there's a very high unemployment rate for people with disabilities. And we also know that people with disabilities have lowered expectations and judgments about them and what they can do or can't do. But this is not about that. This is about uh, employers that really embrace the opportunity to work with uh, students and, and, and people with disabilities. Also, when you're thinking about your career search, I don't know whether you've thought about one of the requirements that you yourself may have is is this place disability savvy? Do they really get disability? Or do they really understand diversity that's part of disability? And it's one thing to understand diversity on race and gender and LGBT issues. But what we find is sometimes the diversity lens doesn't include people with disabilities. So we wanted to make sure that all of the workplaces are disability savvy. And this is a personal question that each one of you is going to answer differently. But how important at this moment or in the next six months of your life is it important to have opportunities to grow? And doing the same stuff is certainly more comfortable. But if you're willing to, to grow with where you think you want to be in your future, this would be a good opportunity to do that. And if you're game to explore paid internships, we have them in the spring, we have them in the summer, we have them in the fall. And if for any reason it doesn't work out, you'll come back and you'll talk to us. And we'll, we'll recommit to finding the right opportunity for you. And the bonus is that you get to add a successful internship to your resume. Particularly now, when there's so many people out of work, and there's people that have been in the workforce that are now out of work. So you're not just competing with your peers who are young and your age and right out of college or in college. You're competing with people that have a lot more experience because the economy is so stinking. So you want to do everything that you can to make sure that you fortify your resume to show the successful experiences that you have. And research has shown, and we all know, that internships are one way to make that happen. So we're going to go to the next slide that says we're on your team. And Tom's going to take care of that slide. Absolutely. So again, you know, one of the reasons we say that is that this is kind of a hands-on process for us. You know, we're really invested in making sure this is a successful opportunity for interns. And you know, one of the ways that we did that is we've really gone to great lengths to make sure that these are employers that are really vetted. Um, and that you know these particular employers really want to hire students and uh, alum with disabilities. So one of the things that we've done, and, and Terry did it down south, and I was up with Christina actually in Sacramento a while ago, and we we do a, a presentation to employers, and we tell them all about you know all these great qualified in, intern potential interns that we uh, can help them find. And so then they come to us and they say, you know what, that sounds like a really great idea. We want to be part of this project. We want access to a new pipeline of talent. We want to give someone you know, that first opportunity, just like someone gave them. So these are you know, employers who really want to be part of this project. Um, and you know, one of the interesting things that's really come out of this is that you know, as, a, as youth leaders being part of You're Disabled and Proud, you know, there's some opportunity for you guys to come into these employers and really show them you know, what a, a smart, uh, educated, um, uh, excited intern can do in, in the work environment. It's a great opportunity to raise disability awareness and really share some ideas. It's been interesting. Some of the employers, after they've had their first intern, are like, wow, we look at certain stuff a little bit differently. 
I was just on the phone with someone in San Diego today who uh, is trying to figure out a way to hire somebody by kind of rearranging some stuff in the office. Because they looked at his resume, they went, wow, that would be a really good fit. Let's just get this done. Uh, you know, one of the other things it's been interesting when we talk about accommodations and stuff. You know, the first time we talk about accommodations, the employers are like, "Oh, you're talking about productivity tools. You're talking about stuff that's going to make somebody work better, smarter, faster in a work environment." We're, you know, totally down with that idea. Um, you know, we're also partnered with uh, Workability and Door. You know, so if there's uh, specific accommodations that need to be found, you know, they've really been great partners coming to the table with us. Uh, and employers are are really uh, really interested in being part of this when we talk about, you know, here's a tool that might be able to make somebody even more pr productive. Um, you know, as college students um, and recent grads. Uh, you know, we're able to bring to the table a whole new, as I mentioned earlier, a whole new uh, pipeline of talent for these employers, and it's something that you know they're really excited about. Um, you know, in addition to that, you know, we've been working with these employers uh, for some of them for for nine, ten months because they had you know interns previously, and you know these are employers who are definitely ready to bring on. Um, really ready to bring on uh, interns to help them out with their business. They're seeing this as a way that they can get more business done. So they might need marketing help, or they might need, uh, you know, social media help. Um, you know, they're really looking at this as something, you know, not only to give somebody their first break, but to really help them with their business. And give uh, the intern a great deal of um, of great work experience. Terry. Okay. We also, you know, what we call it 360 structural support. So we not only prepare the employers, but we talk about accommodations that might be needed, and we talk about um, what they can do to make their workforce more accessible. So we really have been very mindful about this, and um, we are thrilled to offer this opportunity to you. Now we're going to um, talk about what the lessons we've learned. Tom, is there anything that you would like to say to set up the video? No, just you know, this is a video that we we shot last year after the first round of internships. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but it gives you an idea of some of the pretty cool opportunities out there and um, uh, and the advantages to, to accepting an internship. And for those of you that don't have access to the um, the YouTube platform, just to describe it a little bit, um, there are interns that are are from two different places. One is uh, Right Away Communications, which is a, a PR firm. And the other one is Sale Jada, which is what uh, Tom talked about in the internship opportunities. So it may be difficult to hear because they're on a boat and there's a little wind in the background. But the version we're showing you is captioned, so you'll hear a lot of different voices. Everybody introduces themselves, but basically there's two employers, Sale Jada, and then Right Away Productions, and then you'll hear some some. Ideas and thoughts from the interns themselves. This is Christina. Some of you who are YO participants and have been involved in our events and organizing summits will recognize one of the interns who's been an active member of YO Disabled and Proud. It's pretty cool to see a member in the video showcased who went through the project last year. Take it away, Rosemary. The members of the Addison California Consortium are the World Institute on Disability, the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, the California Department of Rehabilitation, the California Foundation for Independent Living Centers, Yo Disabled and Proud, and EIN SOF Communications, Inc. In 2013, the California Consortium launched a summer internship program matching students with disabilities with small minority owned businesses. The goal of this pilot program is to increase employment of people with disabilities within the small business community. Here are some of the early successes. My name is Elizabeth Jones. I am 22 years old. I go to Sacramento State University and my major is journalism with a minor in depth studies. My name is Oliver and uh, I'm an intern at Sail Jada. And, uh, 
I'm a junior at San Diego State right now and I'm majoring in finance. Hi, I'm Kawai. I'm doing it. I'm a business development assistant with South Jada. My major is business management. I just graduated last month from SCSU. My name is Joseph Clifford. I'm 19 years old. I'm a sophomore at Boise State University and I'm studying business marketing. My name is Ryan Frisella. I'm a fifth year student, or I'm going to be going into my fifth year at San Diego State. I'm a religious studies major. I'm Bonnie Osborne. I'm owner of Right Away Communication Services, which is a public relation and marketing company located in Sacramento, California. Um, we're a small independent agency. I'm Carol Noska. I own Sail Jada Charters. I'm sitting on Jada, the 1938 uh, all wooden yawl, which is a classic wooden yacht here in San Diego, and we run a charter company. I like that it's a good summer activity, and it's been giving me experience with working. I've always, I've done a few non- uh, some volunteer work and this is the first time that I've had any real work experience. I learned how, how to promote this boat mm -hmm. and ship to businesses in San Diego and I learned a lot of um, different industry in San Diego. They do different things and I met a lot of people. I think it's definitely taught me what it's like to have like a nine to five job I and mean, you should have to show up every single day, you have to be accountable, you have to be reliable. Um, and I think those are all things I, I've learned because of my disability. The most important thing I've learned is um, just to be persistent with, you know, like because it's a marketing internship, you want to keep contacting people and, you know, set a good example for yourself and whoever you're representing. Being able to be immersed in something that I want to do as a career, being able to be in a marketing office on a day-to-day -day basis and understand just what goes into running a small company and where to start and what kind of things that you're going to be running into, whether it's successes or challenges that you're going to face. We really were able to use the additional staff uh, to help us continue growing, to do a better job for our clients than the two of us would have had the time and availability to do uh, this summer. So for that reason, I feel like it's it's really been a good benefit. The interns have a skill set that I don't have. They have the time that I haven't had. They have the patience in many respects to work on projects that I haven't had. And they've just been a joy to work with. They've really broadened our marketing effort and enhanced our, our visibility. And I'm, I'm very grateful to them and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more work with the organization and with, uh, with the interns. If I were to have the opportunity to have an intern who had a disability at another time or an employee, I don't think that I would have those fears that I initially had or, you know, hesitations about that anymore. I mean, I think that might end up being one of the great benefits of this program. I would highly recommend the program for anyone who's considering it. I would most certainly work again next year with the program, and I, I really have nothing but good things to say about it. Okay, so you know we kind of came up with this five point plan that um, is you know really a, a plan for success not only for this project from an internship perspective but really from an employment perspective looking forward and you know one of the things that we talk about is that plan for success is you know when you're looking for an internship, you know are your career goals um, embedded in uh, you know the job description or in your resume? So you know, we talked about really trying to find a good match. This isn't just about finding work, but really finding an opportunity uh, for you guys to find uh, an internship opportunity in an area that you might be interested in. And you know, I was talking a little bit earlier today about um, working with one of the employers, and it was amazing because the job description for the employer had you know like five or six different things that they really needed somebody to do, and it, it was everything from like 
warehouse management to electrical harness experience to um, uh, um, inventory control and stuff. And when we were going through the person's resume, every single thing was on the resume, um, and it was it was just it was almost perfectly aligned. And you know that kind of matching just makes it easier for everybody. It can really is going to provide a, an amazing internship opportunity for this candidate. So that we're really really excited about that, because you know really this is a two-way internship, right? We talked earlier about how the employer is looking for um, high quality talent to help them out with their business, right? And their business is to get business done and to make money. But at the same time, we want to make sure that you guys are getting some skills in this internship opportunity to really make sure that you can move forward on what it is that you want to do. Um, you know, so are you learning some skills that you want to learn? You know, maybe it's bookkeeping, maybe it's marketing, maybe it's journalism, but making sure that when you leave this internship, you have some new stuff that you've learned and some new stuff you can put on your resume and that you've really learned something about maybe where it is you want to go uh, mm -hmm. going forward. So, um, so the, the, third, the third bullet is you know, really make sure that you understand the fit. You know, does that, that sort of means like does it support you know, both your short-term and long-term goals? So you know, um, internships um, can you know, really help you decide if something is, is, is really the right fit for you. Is this something that's going to further your edu uh, both your education and your career experience? Um, again, making sure that this is a, a job that's going to um, going to get you uh, the intern to where you want to be. Um, you know, number four. You know, really try to maximize this experience um, as an internship, and especially as I'm sorry, as an intern, and especially with smaller employers. You guys are going to have the opportunity to really be involved and to really bring some value not only to the employer. Um, but you know, to, to really go beyond probably what's in the job description. One of the great things about working with smaller employers is that you're going to get a little bit of a taste of what it's like to be an entrepreneur and to work in a small business. Um, so uh, you, know, you really have an opportunity to maximize the experience to sort of go above and beyond what it is that uh, the internship might call for in the very beginning. Um, and then, you know, lastly, this uh, these start out as an eight-week internship. You know, can you personally benefit from this eight-week internship? You know, it's it's a low risk because we know that these employers uh, are really interested in this program. We know they want to hire people with disabilities. You know, we know that they've made a commitment to be mentors and really make sure that uh, this is a learning experience for interns. Um, again, something that can help you define some of your career goals, figure out what you like, and more importantly, maybe what you don't like, and really sort of build a better idea of what your career path might look like. Uh, Terry, is there anything you sort of want to add to that slide? Um, no, I, I, no, I think you covered it beautifully. Great. Um, Thank you. Well, let's, you bet. Let's advance to the next slide, and I'll turn it back over to Terry. Okay. So this is like really the point of sale since it came on. And what we'd like to think is to ask yourself, can you really afford not to do this? And afford it not only in the monetary sense, because you're making real money, and, and Tom talked about the student earned income exclusion, which is great. I just didn't know about that beforehand. But it's really a wonderful opportunity to launch your career. Or explore, like Tom said, it's important to know what you like, but it's equally important to discover, yeah, maybe that's not what I want to do. And an eight-week paid internship, you're getting paid to decide whether it's not something you want to pursue the rest of your professional career. So it's a great opportunity. You like to think of it as a launch pad for your career, that you bring the tools and you bring yourself to work. Um, all the tools and expertise and academic stuff and smarts that you have and experiences and passion. And you bring all of that and we create the opportunity for you to really shine and to see where you want to go with your professional life. We've already vetted the employers. They all want to be there. They, they're on a learning curve on disability, which is really 
a wonderful opportunity because you get to be what's known as a subject matter expert and you get to really show them that youth with disabilities have the right stuff and they're really eager to learn. You have an opportunity uh, game on to make some real money and we talked about the student earned income exclusion and certainly we can get some more information to you know, about that or you probably guys already have that information but there's no risk as far as that's concerned and the E in game on is really enhancing your experiences that you can build a resume moving forward and give you a competitive edge over other students and other youth with and most importantly without disabilities because um, internships are really a, a precious commodity now as a lot more people are not working and we have these ready made for you to choose from. So game on, the O and on is the opportunity to spread your stuff, to show who you are, to show the innovative ideas and that's why we pick um, one of the reasons why we pick small companies and entrepreneurs. We really want you to be matched with people that have an entrepreneurial spirit, that are risk takers, that think outside the box, that are dreamers and like to make stuff happen out of nothing. It's not going to be um, a boring kind of experience where you're Xeroxing or like Tom shared, he was filing. My first internship was filing to I know the alphabet really well and that wasn't really what I was looking for. So this is an opportunity to not only stretch your stuff but explore your stuff and stretch and grow and really kind of imagine where you want to be two years out, five years out and farther in your career. And the end in Game On is there's no other program that will offer you the 360 degree support that you have going into this. It's not just you. We don't just like drop kick you into this internship. You have support from all of us and from the Department of Rehab and from Yo and from Workability. And so it's really a, a low risk opportunity for you. And that we can't see any reasons why you wouldn't want to do it. So, you know, when we can talk about more of this stuff in the Q and A. So let's move to the next slide and Tom will wrap it up with, okay, now that we've told you about the internship, what's next? How do you get in the game? Great question. So basically to get into the game you've got to let us know that you're interested and that you want to receive the job descriptions. And again, um, you know, we're working with Yo, we're working with Workability, we're working with Department of Rehab. You know, uh, those um, uh, some of those opportunities are, are already out there, um, so you know, check with uh, Christina and Kirk about those. Um, and again, when you're looking at them, you know, think about what your career goals are and think how well those match up. You know, maybe you have an interest in animals, maybe you have an interest in, in zoos or, or um, you know, the show dog industry, you know, there's an internship for that. Maybe, uh, you know, the, the recreation is your thing and maybe the, the sailing opportunity would be part for that. But see what internships, you know, really match up with not only your skill sets but really where you want to go from a career perspective. You know, reach out to Yo, I'm putting Christina on the spot here, but you know, the choice is really yours. Um, you know, these jobs are out there. We're getting new internship opportunities all the time. Um, my email just pinged while I was saying that and I bet you it's probably another job description because we were waiting to hear from somebody else. Lots of opportunity out there, sometimes spring, sometimes summer, sometimes fall. You know, Northern California, Southern California, Sacramento, um, some of these are even virtual. So there's lots of opportunity out there. All you got to do is let us know and we'll go to work for you. And this is Christina. Tom, could, awesome. could you just quickly go over what a virtual opportunity would be like for those that might not be familiar with what that would be? Absolutely. That's a great question, Christina. So, you know, um, one of several of the employers and the, the sailboat company is a great example. They have a boat, right? Great big boat. But really, you know, from their marketing perspective and from their uh, customer service perspective, you don't have to be on the boat. They don't even have an office. They work out of their home and then, you know, they're on the boat doing tours of the bay. 
So even someone in Sacramento could probably get an internship with the San Diego Sailing Company because what they need is people to help out with the social media. They need people to make phone calls and do research around how to find new markets um, and, and things like that. It doesn't matter that you don't live in San Diego. Those jobs um, are, those jobs are not only uh, available to you, but it's the way that things are going. So a great example of that right now. Christina, where are you? I'm in Sacramento. Okay, Terry, where are you? I'm in Los Angeles, California. Okay, and I'm in Washington, D.C. So that's what we mean by virtual, right? So people get work done from all over the place nowadays. You don't always have to be in the same place. Some of our jobs you have to be in the same place. They want people in the office, you know, 9 to 5. But more and more often, and this is how jobs in America is beginning to work, people work more remotely. We call that virtual. Right. And you may, you may um, know it as working remote or working off-site. There's a couple of different words for it. So um, it, it all means the same, that you don't have to be physically at the place you can be wired through the internet, through phone, through anywhere. You don't have to be physically there. So it opens up the possibilities, which is great. So before we get to the questions, um, and, and we hope that we have a lot of questions and concerns, and we can even talk about some of the individual opportunities we have, we just did want, because we're funded by the Department of Labor, we're thrilled about that. I just want to make sure I read this out. Um, so that we have separation of this was funded by the Office of Disability Employment Policy, U.S. Department of Labor, Grant Number OD 22554-11-75-4-6. So this does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of the Office of Disability Employment Policy, U.S. Department of Labor, nor does the mention of trademarks, commercial products or organizations imply endorsements by the U.S. government. So that's kind of like an L word from our sponsor. So now that we've read that, <laughs> now that you've heard about Addison, how can we add you in? And we'd love to open it up for questions through the chat box or questions. Um, and I think Veronica is writing something now. Um, we want to know if you're on the phone or in the chat box, what questions you might have. And Carrie, while people are typing in their questions, um, I just want to remind folks that there are also participants over the phone. If you want to unmute your phone, uh, now is a good time to do so. You are also open to ask okay. questions. Well, while you're thinking of your questions, I have a question. Is that okay, Christina? Yes, absolutely. And I have a couple questions from participants okay. that couldn't join today. But go ahead, Terry. And I do see some people typing, okay. and I saw one question come in. Okay, yeah, here's one. Let's ask this question first. This is from Aflat. I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name and I apologize if I do. I jumped in a little late. What is the age limit to be part of these internships? Tom? Great question. There really is no age limit. In fact, uh, last summer um, we worked with an intern who um, had had an injury later in life. He had gone through some school, and uh, he was, um, I think he was late 40s, early 50s, something like that. So there's really no age limit. Does, it, does someone have to be at least 18 years old? Great question. Um, you know, from an employment contracts perspective, I believe they usually do, um, but that has not come up previously. But since we're aiming sort of for college students or fairly recent alums, um, I think um, it's pretty much been 18 and over, yes. Okay. Here's a question from Dolores at CRIL. And you can you feel free to answer it later if I'm not a youth. That's okay, I'm not a youth either. Um, how does an organization become an employer? Oh, that, that's a great question. Um, 
So the, the way this has been working is that the employers are member organizations of the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. Um, so again, we've been, they're part of the grant. They are our employer side. And um, they've, um, uh, we've been holding um, similar sorts of, of meetings like we're, we're doing over the phone with you guys. And that's how the employers have sort of come to the table. And, and the reason we're doing that also is because this is a, a grant. It's kind of a pilot project or demonstration project. They've got technical terms in the government for it. But because the employment of people with disabilities from historically excluded communities has been so low, each one of these consortiums is approaching this situation in a very different kind of way. And so we want to want to isolate as many variables as possible. So while we're always looking for wonderful employers to be part of, of the movement of hiring people with disabilities, and we're talking about integrated um, situations of employment, um, for this particular project comes right, we need to limit that to the companies that are part of, affiliated by the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. But if you know of employers who also want to hire people with disabilities, then we can talk about that offline because aside from this project, it's always good to have um, uh, kind of an arsenal of employers who are pretty thinking and progressive. Okay, the next question is, are these opportunities available to those with developmental disabilities or are they targeted for people with physical disabilities? That's a really good question. Um, they are for any youth or for anyone older with a disability who would like to work. So that could be developmental, it could be physical, it could be sensory. It's not restricted. Tom or Christine, anything you want to add to that before we go to the next question? I think you answered it very well, no, um, Carrie. And I just want to add that some of the YO members that participated participated in the internship program last year um, even had multiple disabilities. So their primary disability might have been mobility, but they were also deaf or hard of hearing or had other types of disabilities, um, including mental health disabilities. So it's really good to know that, um, that this internship program is open to people with disabilities of all kinds. Great. Thank you so much. Now we also um, the next question comes from, I've always held a passion in the entertainment music industry. I want to get involved by being a part of the promotional music aspect of a radio station recording studio. So my question is, will you have any internships for those this year? And we actually just sent two uh, job descriptions over to Cal State Northridge. Um, I don't know whether they've been filled or not, actually. But it was located in California, a group of dedicated journalists, community leaders, business people, and allies are working hard using best practices and cutting edge technology to serve our audience and partners by providing news coverage, event management, and sophisticated marketing for a multi-channel distribution center. They're looking for an intern who can think on their feet, follow instructions, focus on details and past project role without requiring significant oversight by a manager. Skills require the ideal candidate will possess the ability to focus on assigned work and follow the process set forth by the manager. He or she should be able to work independently, solve problems, demonstrate attention to detail, and a work plan is executed to actually complete the tasks or the projects. He or she should present a professional appearance and be able to follow a scripted presentation if the task or project includes making phone calls to potential clients or advertisers. So a question or challenge arise, he or she would quickly consult with his or her manager to resolve the issue in order to move forward with the task or the project. He or she should be comfortable in an office environment and be able to sit for long periods of time while focused on an assigned task. He or she should be able to ignore distractions that may occur throughout the office, including but not limited to independent discussions between employees, visitors, or staff. So that's a sample of how we have 
each one of these job descriptions. And there was another one that was looking for similar positions um, for production interns. So now I, I have to check to see if those are still open. Hang on one second. Yes. The one for now this is what came in yesterday from Kat, who is Tom's colleague at WIG. So the one that I just read, um, this is for they're looking for sales interns to work with this group at the multi channel distribution system. So now let me get that off of my screen and ask you, Veronica. You also live in Northern California. This may this may be interesting. So what you should do is write to Kat K A T at wind dot O R G. Is that right, Tom? Yep. Okay. And ask her about the PM1 position. We have all these coded, so it's, I'm sorry, PM1. Yeah, um, Is there an easier way to do this, Tom? I'm open to it. Yeah, no, oh, it's just, it's um, yeah, and I, I can help out with that because that position has actually changed a little bit. Um, there, there. That is. That's in Sacramento. Um, and and uh, Christina and I were were together when we met the uh, the CEO of that company. And they're they're looking for folks to help out on sales and uh, also people who can write from a journalism standpoint. And um, uh, I, I, uh, the the coding is PM. I think one and two maybe. But um, it, while it's not technically in the music industry, it is um, a, a media company. Um, they have some TV stuff. They have some radio stuff. Um, so it would certainly, um, if that's an area you're interested in, we'd love to see a cover letter and resume for it. And this is Christina. The exciting part of that opportunity is also that that company is relatively new. So it's a wonderful opportunity to get your, your feet wet with the company. and. Potentially, um, possibly stay involved even longer past your internship. Absolutely, and that's that's something that I, I should have touched on earlier, especially for people who might be graduating soon or who have already graduated. A number of these employers are open to the idea. You know, if we find an intern that we think is really good, um, we might turn that eight-week internship into a part-time job. And we've had some of them say, if they're really good, we're going to turn it into a full-time job because we need talent. So yeah. not all of them are in a position to do that. Um, it varies from employer to employer and frankly, sometimes from month to month. But these internships can lead to um, much, much more. Yeah. And don't laugh, but the coding on this is PMS. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> so. Carrie uh, and Tom, this is Christina again from Yo. I promised one of the youth that had class this evening that I'd ask her question. She's very interested in taking on an internship, but she would like to remain in the Bay Area. She'd like to know whether or not we foresee any internship opportunities coming up in the Bay for summer specifically. Um, I will I will put myself out there at the risk of being wrong and say yes. Um, the the orientations with employers that we've done in Sacramento and Southern California were a month or two ago, and the Bay Area ones uh, will be happening very shortly. And usually, sh just after those orientations are when the jobs start to appear. So for that intern, um, I don't know what type of internships will be appearing, but I suspect um, a few will be showing up in the Bay Area. And as long as she stays in close contact with Yo and Christina, she'll be one of the first ones to find out about them. Thank you, Tom. And, and this is Christina again. I should mention that um, Kirk Aranda, our youth organizer here at Yo Disabled and Proud, who's also in the room today, um, he is keeping an active list 
of all YO members that are interested in doing internships, uh, whether it's right now in the spring semester or during the summer semester. I know we've heard from many members that spring is hard to do, but lots of people are looking for opportunities for summers. So if you are interested and you are yes. a part of YO, um, please let Kirk or myself know, um, and we can add you to the list to make sure that you get upfront information about what job in, or internship opportunities are coming up in your area or virtual internship opportunities. Great. Because they're remote, they're in Southern California, and they're in Northern California. Um, Veronica wants to know, for the internships, would I need to have over-the-top writing skills? Just curious. Um, that really um, depends on I'm sorry, go ahead, Tom. Sure. So, so the, the media company that I'm thinking about has two openings. One is in sales and one is in journalism. Um, I, I think you would need pretty good writing skills for the journalism opportunity, um, but you know, not so much for the sales opportunity. And you know, we've, um, uh, we've talked with them a little bit, and they are flexible. And you know, it never hurts to just put yourself out there either. Um, so you know, if you have some writing experience but a real passion for being involved, um, you know, it never hurts to put that in a cover letter, um, send along a good resume, and um, and see what happens. And you know, Tom, you're absolutely right. Because the great part, one of the added benefits actually in working for entrepreneurs is that they are not rigid thinkers. They think creatively and fluidly. And we would encourage you to reach out to them because you may have a skill that they don't think they want, but they may see something in you that would be a good fit. Now, it may or may not happen, but you really should, as Tom says, put yourself out there and get yourself in the game. So, um, And meeting people is important, too. And even if it doesn't work out, then you have one more interview or one more cover letter that you've tried or one more resume that you've put out. And that's always helpful because every time you do that, the process becomes more comfortable for you and more polished. And therefore, if you're comfortable, more of you, the authentic you, that's really the great part and what employers will be attracted to, that's going to start to shine even more as you feel more comfortable with it. So it's always good to go for stuff like this. And as we mentioned many times, there's low risk and no risk in this. We want to create, first of all, a really safe laboratory um, for us to all figure this out together. We have another question that says, um, I joined a little late. So sorry if it was already covered. Well, you are very sweet and polite. Thank you for that. Is there a website or a list of internships that I could refer my consumers to? Consumers, I'm, I'm guessing clients and people with disabilities. Um, you know, there isn't, um, and, and here's why. One of the, the uh, important parts of this is that it's a it's a fairly uh, rigid process. So, but you know, if you're working um, with uh, with uh, workability or Yo, um, you know, they have all of those opportunities, um, oh. and also, um, you know, obviously, well, you're a consumer. So, if you're like a, a Job developer or something, we'd be happy to. Actually, she, okay. So I'm actually, she just wrote back, or he, uh, a vocational specialist for adults with developmental disabilities. Well, love to talk to you. So connect with Tom, and then we yeah, can I, uh, go case by case and see what's, what's happening. Absolutely. And um, I'm in Washington until tomorrow night, um, but I, my normal office is in Berkeley. And I've got a really easy email. It's tom at wid.org, T-O-M at W-I-D dot O-R-G. And I'd be happy to talk with you about the opportunities um, in your neck of the woods or you know the virtual ones as well. Great. And she says, thanks. I'll check in next week. So she'll let you get back to work and settled and back in next week. Great. And Veronica said thanks. You're welcome, Veronica. <laughs> and 
Any other um, questions uh, from folks on the phone? Or Christina, do you have questions from folks that didn't make it today? Do we have folks on the phone that would like to ask any questions? I've heard somebody try to cut in, I think, once or twice. OK. Um, I asked my question for the Bay Area student. And I think you covered the other questions throughout the presentation. So thank you so much. You are welcome. I'm just curious, actually. I'm going to advance it to our contact information slide. Um, uh, Tom at WID.org. Mine's a little more complicated. Uh, it's T A R I at E I N, like Nancy, S like Sam, O like Office, S like Frank, communications, spelled out plural, dot com. And I'm wondering if there's anybody on the phone or in our chat webinar here who has had an internship. Oh, I see a couple people writing. Dolores, yes, you have. Veronica has. Afla has. Well, this is great. So from what we said today, do you think, having had an internship experience already, is this something that might be of interest to you? Most definitely. Thanks, Veronica. That's great. And Dolores is still writing, I think. So Chris, oh, Dolores says, I'm a youth organizer, and something like this I see is very beneficial to the youth I work with. Well, thank you, Dolores. That's really great. Um, I'm assuming that you and Yo are already connected. Um, which is great. So we're thrilled to invite you. Yes, you are. Great. <laughs> so we're thrilled to invite you to the Addison family and add you in to our family as well. Um, Christina, this will be archived, I believe. Yes, this on the Yo website. Yes, this webinar will be archived within the next two weeks. I've already put an announcement out on the Yo Facebook page to check our education tab in the Yo Disabled and Proud website, which features all of our past webinar trainings. And I also want to bring up that we're doing two trainings uh, during the month of April. We skipped March. Our next Yo webinar training will be held at the same time from 3.30 to 5 on April 17th. That's again a Thursday. And that will be on disability and sexuality. Great. I just want to thank you, uh, both Terry and Tom, for joining us today. I think this has been a really wonderful opportunity for youth and allies uh, that have joined us to learn about what our project is all about. And it was very exciting to be a part of the Addison uh, family last year at the beginning of our project. And we're really um, excited to be a part of it for a second year, too. Uh, while I'm out on leave during the summer, Kirk Aranda will be uh, primarily responsible for uh, communicating with Tom around the students and youth that we have um, that are interested in taking on these internship roles. So I'll make sure that you guys get to me over the phone before my departure on June 1st. Um, and I just want to thank you both so, so much for putting in the time to put this presentation together. I'm sure that it will be viewed many times in the archive library. Uh, we had several students tell us that they couldn't make it due to class. And that's always an issue that arises for us when we're working for youth during regular business hours. But um, that's why we have archived webinars that are fully captioned and accessible for folks. So thank you so very much for joining us. And I look forward to uh, placing more YO, YO members into internship opportunities. Thank you well, so thank much. Thank you, Christina. Christina. And we really uh, uh, thank you and YO, and we really appreciate the opportunity. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary, for moderating today's webinar. We look forward to seeing you all 
again on April 17th at our next presentation. Have a good evening.